When initially introduced into the Bleach series, the race known as the Quincy were stated to be a proud people, human beings born spiritually aware that are able to sense and eventually develop an ability to manipulate the natural spiritual energy that resides within the atmosphere, also known as Reishi. Combining this Reishi with Rarioku, one's own spiritual pressure or power, they can create objects like weapons to defend themselves and their communities. Once known as the Chosen People, they were descended from the gods themselves. With their spiritual abilities to prove it, in hopes of keeping this power from diluting, they resorted to plans such as eugenics to keep the Quincy bloodline pure, a race that prides themselves on their traditions, a group that could be seen as very stuck in their ways. Their stubbornness is what dwindled them down to such low numbers by refusing to entrust the extermination of Hollows to the Shini Gami. Their ideology, as theorized by Mayori, having little to do with the overall choice their race made. Made, claiming it had more to do with a Quincy's inability to resist holification, resulting in them being poisoned and dying, rather than simply becoming holified like a Shinigami. Diametrically opposed to both Hollows and Shinigami, the Quincy King paved a path for all that came after to follow, and for nearly a millennia, the Quincy's did their best to stick to these principles and survive the long absence of their majesty. Some straying from the path of greatness, the display of Sternritters that we see in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, each being dynamic and unique in their own ways. A lot of them are a far fetch from what you would assume a typical homogenized Quincy we've been led to expect would look like. In both Quincy invasions, despite taking place in Soul Society, an entire nation state comprised of nothing but Reishi, we see none of the Quincy's take full advantage of their massive handicap above the Shinigami. Damn near 26 Quincy and the King of Quincy himself are present, and none of them live up to the Reishi manipulating master archers that we were led to believe built such a domineering, genetically selective empire since the dawn of the Three Realms. The Shinigami, although utterly demolished by the force of the remaining surviving lineage of Quincy, should have stood even less of a chance than they did already. It's honestly a shame that in lieu of the classic ways, many of His Majesty's Chosen instead chose to use their shrifts and not put any effort into maintaining the proud image of the Quincy that history knows so well. That is, all but one. Kurge Opi, the Jail, General Commander of the Hueco Mundo Hunting Squad, is a Quincy among Quincy. Kurge truly is a real Quincy Patriot. Where to even begin with Kurge? A man of such grace and majesty, handpicked by Yuhaba in order to run a grand selection of the Arankar in Hueco Mundo, trusted to eliminate the weak from His Majesty's new kingdom and force the strong to submit to the domination of the Quincy race. Kurge Opi sits on such a high pedestal, he won't even dirty his shoes with the sands of Hueco Mundo, sat comfortably in his throne suited for a true Quincy Lord, placed neatly on the mat beneath. After Haribel was captured, Hueco Mundo was able to be reduced to such little numbers, the entire surrounding area of Las Noches was left with a mere handful of Arankars, to which Kurge planned on dwindling even further by having every remaining Hollow fight each other in a tournament of will. But before that, Kurge figures that they didn't take enough of a beating the first time, and despite being the survivors of the initial invasion, they must first prove themselves by kneeling and begging to join the Empire. Or they can just get impaled through the torso. Their choice. This one Aron car tries to ask a question, and he immediately gets boom disconnected from the call. Kurge doesn't have any time for bullshit. I'm pretty sure he just stabs another guy here because he felt like it. His subordinates aren't even sure if he plans on actually letting any Arankar enter their ranks. Kurge goes to take out a third victim, but this time his spear gets dodged and a helping hand comes along to slice that thing in half. It's Lolly and Melanie. Who? And despite really thinking they were doing something here, Kurge immediately knocks them both out with a flick of the wrist, not even gracing the trash by watching them fall to the floor after he cuts them down. Having his underlings go after and pick up this the trash. Disgusting. They passed Kurge's test though, at least they had the balls to stand up against a true Quincy Alpha like him. He's even feeling himself enough to talk shit on Aizen, fellow immortal god Alpha Male, talking about how he must not have been all that to keep subordinates like that in his ranks. 
This man is so disgusted. I'm surprised he didn't pull out the spray deodorant like my man Ghetto. It's a damn springtime for monkeys! He honestly might have if he didn't get immediately pulled up on. But Kurge just stopped mid-sentence and turned to catch the attack that was coming for him. That speed, that awareness. Only a true Quincy could move like that. Even as they slaughter his crew, he looks at the Trezbistas like they're not even gum under his boots. Those eyes are the expression of a man you just made dirty his boots with that Huecomundo sand. sand. As one of his men run up asking for a retreat order, Kurge kindly obliges by helping him retreat from life. And trying to convince the Trezbistas to lay down their arms, he just met them and he already knows that his powers are far beyond their comprehension. Bred specifically for utmost perfection, Kurge wears this elegance on his sleeve, preaching the gospel of his majesty to the three Arankar in hopes these strong women can be of use to the Quincy Empire, urging them that there is no greater happiness than living and dying under Quincy rule. Back check that. And after they decline his offer, you can literally see the sadness in this absolute Chad's face. Like shit, I really have to fold you motherfucker. And that's exactly what he does. One, two, three, triple homicide on Hueco Mundo Street. This man just will not stop and he just does not care. Your life is nothing. Literally just bored. Looking up as Ichigo arrives, completely unbothered that the special high-level war potential just showed up at his front doorstep. Kurge is only concerned he might break a sweat in his finest Quincy attire. It's not even like Kurge doesn't know who he is. He calls Ichigo out by name and instantly sicks his goons on him upon arrival. In fact, it seems like Kurge is actually happy that Ichigo decided to show up. All these warm-ups, it's about time someone gave Kurge the main yeah, course. Boy. Finally, able to let out some real power, Kurge pulls out that clean-looking saber and fires off some reishi arrows, revealing that he's so Quincy, even his sword is a bow and arrow. Get a load of this fucking guy. He hits all shots on Ichigo, and even though Ichigo turns it around on Kurge and ricochets those shots right back at him, Kurge immediately just brushes that nonsense off. Just says his lack of skill is dizzying. Skill issue. What? Are those the words of a man who sounds worried? I think not. The man among men is even so modest to deny Uryu's holy arrows are weaker than his. Even presented with an opposing view, Kurge just immediately knocks that shit away and doubles down on his Quincy ideology. Absolutely based. Once again, a true Quincy patriot. Kurge thinks it's time to stop messing around, especially since he just got the okay to eliminate Kurosaki. This man wasn't even ordered to kill him yet. So loyal. Immediately going into Let's Steal and unlocking the final state of the Quincy and unleashing his ultimate power and holy form. He correctly states to Ichigo, what he knew of the form is a tainted, outdated form that has since been reshaped and developed into an even greater amplification of strength. And how could it not be? In the hands of such a dedicated follower of the craft, Vol Standig never fit anyone better. Even both Chad and Inoue are taken aback. Like, damn, this bitch is beautiful. My man's got the Prada boots on, flawless. Oh Kurge instantly teleports behind Ichigo with intense speed. And even as Kurosaki tries to run away, Kurge is still able to keep up with him and actually land real attacks on the substitute Shinigami and putting Ichigo on the back foot. And as Ichigo normally does when he's on the back foot, he starts talking shit. Kurosaki's confidence bolsters him into feeling a slight relax on Kurge's blade, triggering him to take the opportunity and strike a large Getsuga Tensho right into Kurge's throat. But this man just eats it! Full on buster blade to the neck, no damage. Kurge is a mad lad, said, is that really all you got? Smacks Ichigo's big butter knife away like it's nothing and goes, all right, bet. You ain't seen nothing yet. And now, shit just gets really out of pocket. All of a sudden, Orihime's Santen Keshun starts getting sucked away, completely disintegrating the civilians' defenses. But it's not just Orihime's barrier. Everything in Hueco Mundo composed of Reishi is being completely absorbed by Kurge's Volstandig. Like a giant hammer of light, Kurge welds this massive amount of Reishi into a terrifying attack, literally named God's Justice and throws it around as he's about to inflict the entire remaining population of Hueco Mundo with pure, 
Holy damage. Right at this moment, the large buildup of spiritual energy shatters like glass. And before Kurge even has time to react to that despelling of his technique, he takes a devastating wallop to the mint. Laid directly on his ass, Kurge looks up at the gargantuan monster that stands before him. While Kurge was too busy focusing on the substitute Shinigami, the Trezbistas perform their ultimate tag team finisher, the summoning of Aeon, the Destroyer. A horrifying amalgamation of the fusion of the three Fraction level Arankar's arms. Ion is an indiscriminate mass of strength that thrashes about and takes out anyone that lies in its path. It was enough to demolish one, two, three, four, literally almost five Vice Captain level Shinigami at once, and needed to be dispatched by Head Captain Genrusai Yamamoto before it could cause any more trouble. The beast lets out a sharp, bellowing wail and lunges forward at the Hunter Squad Captain, who gallantly opposes the creature, proclaiming a monster like him could never beat him. Oh, oh my god. Did you stop him? Oh, oh my lord. Heinrich! He literally put him in the dirt. I've never seen something so disgusting. Good God. Apache walks over after the absolutely disgraceful funeral burial we have just witnessed here today to go talk shit. But then, my man was alive the whole time. He stabs her in her shit, gets up and just literally unbreaks his neck. Like damn, Yuha Ba needs to adjust the durability of Blue. Everyone is speechless. Even Ion got his mouth shut for they are in the presence of his holiness the one closest to God. And for this transgression, this blasphemy, they must all be silenced. Kurge immediately sets his sights on Ion, the biggest threat at the moment besides Ichigo. This cocky motherfucker looks at the giant hulking monster that just bent him crooked not even a minute ago and tells him for once in his life, he's actually about to live. Ion's obviously like, hmm, cap, and charges in, but everyone else can tell something is not right. And they were right, because this time, instead of the Reishi all around the area, Kurge instead literally just starts sucking up Aeon's body matter like a vacuum, literally reducing this man to a skeleton, and then for good measure, absorbing all that up too. And this, my friends, oh, this is the reason my man Kurge is number one Quincy Patriot, the one closest to God for this ability this one power alone. Kurge's ability, called Sklav Ray, Holy Slave, allows him to literally dominate every form of Reishi and force it to submit to his will. A basic Quincy technique, but maximized and utilized to its fullest extent. Kurge's natural potential as a Quincy allows him to subjugate even spiritual beings themselves beneath his heels and completely devour them. Everyone in the immediate area can sense this fuckery from a mile away. Kurge just put on a sale on ass whoopings and the promo commercial just aired. Sun Sun's first instinct is to quickly call forth her ability Snake Shell Fortress, which summons a large barrier around her and all of the remaining party in Hrekomundo. Kurge just lowers his head like, damn, they really think that low of me, huh? The Aran cars are literally sweating. Sun Sun, who's in the middle of explaining how her defense shield works and how it will help them accomplish their plan when, yoink, this man was listening the entire time, said, yeah, that would have been a good plan, you thought, and then just starts ripping them all apart with his reishi stealing ability. Instead of letting them perish slow and torture them, Kurge, remembering his holy status, doesn't allow himself to give in to such a sin Full act. He will take them out quickly and subjugate them all to race. In typical Bleach fashion, Ichigo Kurosaki arrives to save his friends again, this time in Bankai. With a precise blast of Getsuga aimed directly at Kurge's holy halo, his reishi control is disrupted, which allows Ichigo to level the playing field again and engage in swordplay with the holy angel. Bankai Ichigo being the most formidable threat in the bunch, as the two continue some back and forth, Kurge finds it impossible to steal Ichigo's Bankai, which allows the latter to actually keep up with the Quincy, even with Aeon's Reishi amplifying his strength. Kurge has a hard time believing that Ichigo is able to surpass him in strength. But to be fair, Ichigo is also him. And when two hymns engage in battle, 
there always ends up being one him who is more him than the other him. And that him is him. Kurge fires more holy arrows that Ichigo is able to slash away and deflect with his Bankai's heightened speed. Kurge correctly noting this as being his main problem. Only being able to use Blute Vene or Blute Artery at separate times, not simultaneously, means he has to leave himself open for a chance to do any real damage to the Shinigami. Kurge wonders if he needs reinforcements, knowing the threat he's up against. And my man, the fucking Chad, says hell no to that. I ain't afraid of shit. And then he gets backstabbed by Kisuke. Isn't that some shit? Literally one of the coolest, most cold-blooded and calculated Quincy's we've ever seen and ever will see, and he gets taken out with absolutely no respect to his character. You see, the problem was Kubo made Kurge way too strong and realized that complete manipulation of all reishi in the area was way too OP. Not a single Quincy after this uses Sklav Rai. Is it because they all could and just chose not to? Or is Kurge really just that fucking guy? I'm pressed to believe the latter statement. Because even after getting taken out from behind, my man Kurge makes a comeback again. Ranzo Tengai, oh my god, are you kidding me? This man has all the stops. We literally have not seen Ranzo Tengai since Soul Society arc, when Uryu fought Mayuri. This is some real Quincy history. Literally, the only other character to do this besides Uryu. You can't tell me Kubo didn't realize he made a mistake with this entire race of characters, bro. Kurge Opie is Schmitty Warbin Jaegerman Jensen. He is number one. In his last moments, he uses his shrift, the letter J for his jail ability. I'm going to jail! A cage of indestructible Ryatsu that keeps its prisoners locked inside no matter how hard they attempt to break out. Even with his dying breath, Kurge imprisons Ichigo inside this cage throughout the entire first invasion. And while inside that prison, Ichigo can literally hear the cries and screams of all the Shinigami getting erased in Soul Society, while he's just sitting there, not able to do anything, even in death. Because Kurge does get done dirty once again after this, the Holy One remains well deserving of his name, serving his majesty's purpose every step of the way, keeping Ichigo from interrupting the initial attack on Seireite, his prison technique surviving on even as Kurge himself does not. Literally only actually escaping because Ichigo was secretly part Quincy. So realistically, Kurge only failed his mission because of lack of foresight on Yuhaba's part. His own boss. The man doesn't even make his own mistakes. You can only blame upper management. Look, okay, okay, okay. This jerk off fest has probably gone on long enough, but in all my years, and please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, there has never been a Quincy that more exemplifies the superior race of Hollow Hunters. Oryu Ishida? <laughs> Yuhaba? Made his best subordinate's final strife go to waste? Kurge Opi, the holiest of his majesty's angels, rise again and erase these imposters from the ranks. You will be our leader this time.